The AUR is one of the best things about Arch Linux, and one of the first things you're going to discover once you install Arch, or some Arch-related distro, is that you're going to have absolutely no idea how to install anything from it. So, today I'm going to show you the two methods, with an AUR helper, and by building the packages manually. I was supposed to do this video months ago, but it completely slipped my mind. So, if you're new to this channel, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below, because it'll really help the channel out. I'm aiming for a thousand subs, and any help be really appreciated. So now that's out of the way, let's get started. Good afternoon everyone and welcome back to the channel. So one of the first things I should cover is what the AUR actually is. So the AUR is the Arch User Repository. Think something like the repositories on Debian or any other distro, but Instead of being maintained by the distro maintainers, like they are with the main repos on Arch, so Arch also has the main repos, but the AUR, basically what those are is a community managed version of the repo, so anyone can put things up on the AUR, and theoretically it's less secure, but because of how the AUR functions, where you have people who are far more intelligent than you looking at all of the packages, and actually working out whether anything's actually going to be a problem to install in your system, it really ends up being far more secure than actually using the main repos. So I don't really think it's an argument against Arch that a lot of the things are in the AUR. So my next point is that even though you can use an AUR helper for everything, and most people do use an AUR helper, there are going to be a lot of times where something is going to break and you need to know how to build manually so you can actually install any of your programs, or sometimes there's going to be a problem with the build script and you're going to have to go and modify it manually and then install it manually to actually get it working. Most of the time it's fine, but there will be a lot of occasions where you run into this, especially with projects that aren't maintained properly. So there are a bunch of different AUR helpers, so let's actually have a quick look at them. As it says here, AUR helpers are not supported by Arch Linux and you should be familiar with the manual build process in order to be prepared to troubleshoot problems. So there are a couple of different categories of AUR helpers and all of them are available on the AUR. So this is part of the reason why you need to at least have a basic understanding of the manual build process. So we'll look into the helpers first and then I'll actually show you how to install one of them. So we have the search and download helpers, we have the search and build helpers, and then we also have the Pac-Man wrappers. So most people are going to be using a Pac-Man wrapper. I use Yay. Really, you could use any one of these. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to be using Yay though, and a lot of the examples you see on like GitHub and GitLab projects will be using Yay or Yowit. I don't know if Yowit's still around. It's not in this list by the looks of it. So maybe that got discontinued or something, or its name was changed. Anyway, let's actually have a look at how Yay functions. So if we go man Yay, if we go right down to the bottom, SYU, where is it? So this is straight up a wrapper for Pac-Man. You could just use this to maintain your main packages. So if you pass in yay-syu, that will update all of your repo and all of your AUR packages. So you could actually just replace using Pac-Man with this if you really wanted to. I typically just use yay to maintain my AUR packages and I would recommend you doing the same. Just in case there's anything weird with any of your main repo stuff, it's probably safer just to keep it with your AUR programs. Obviously, you can do whatever you want on your system, that's just what I do. So let's have a look through some of these options here. So if we do yay with no arguments, so if we do, let's say we want to look up Discord, for example, uh, if I can spell, this will basically do a search and then I can say that I want to install any of these programs in here. So let's say we wanted to install something like Python Discord or some other program in here. So let if we did want to do Python Discord, we could put in 11, then press enter, and that will then go to install it. So that will then do the exact same stuff that you would have done with your manual build process, but it will do all of that automatically. So if we wanted to update our packages, we go yay-syu, that will update all of your packages, so not just your AUR packages. So we do that, that will then try to update my core repos, my extra repos, my community repos, and also my AUR packages. So that'll go through all of that. That'll take a couple of seconds to go through that. I don't have any updates. You can see up here that I've got a thing to show my updates. 
and apparently it hasn't updated yet, so I guess I do have some updates. Anyway, let's just cut that off camera for a second. Now that it's got through the main stuff, it's now prompted me to update something in my AUR packages. So this is TTF Symbola. I'm not going to update this package in particular. This is part of the reason why you need to understand the manual build process. I know that at this point in time, the package for this program is completely busted. So I'm not going to install that. There is a way to fix it, but that would involve actually downloading the package from the AUR, manually building it, I would have to manually put in the zip file that it needs because the current zip file isn't accessible and this is part of the reason why you need to understand manually building your code. So if we do yay-sua, this will, as we saw, I, I did it off camera, it will bring up the AUR updates. So as I said before, I'm not going to update this package, but if I wanted to exclude this one, so let's say we exclude one. So if I've got a big list of programs and I want to exclude one, I did this before when I updated all of my programs. I excluded the TTF file here, and then that will then just say, skip that program, don't update that. So in this case, there's nothing to update. So next up we have installing an actual program. So if we do yay dash s, and then let's say we want to install LF, for example, then that will then try to install that. If we try to search for that, there is a ton of programs that have LF in the name. So sometimes it's easier to just directly say, I want to install this program instead of going through the search. So I'm not going to install that now because I already have it installed, but if you want to just press one and then it will go through the same sort of Pac-Man process that you're probably used to. So the rest of these options aren't too important for this video. This video isn't dedicated to what Yay can do and what Pac-Man can do. It's more about how to install and update applications. If you wanted to uninstall applications, it's very simple. You use the dash R option and a couple of different options along with it. You can look it up yourself, but I'm going to do a dedicated video on Pac-Man at some point but that's not what this video is. So now let's actually go over to manually installing a package. So as I said before, you're going to have to do this at least once, if nothing else, just to install your AUR helper. So let's actually go have a look at that. So I found that the best way to find any packages for the AUR when you don't have an AUR helper installed is just to go to your search engine, look up whatever you want to find and then just stick AUR on the end and typically it'll be the first or second result. So this is for actually installing yay. So let's say we wanted to do this. So this is very simple. I've done a way older video about this, but let's actually go through it in this one as well. So we've got this link right here. This is the link that we're going to have to clone. But the reason that I said earlier that the AUR is far more secure than your standard package repos is because of these comments down here. So you have a bunch of people who are just really boring people who are always trying to just make these packages more secure. And if something breaks, you're going to hear about it pretty much instantly. Or if something is insecure, you're going to hear about it very, very quickly for anything except the most small of small packages. And that's part of the reason why the AUR is more secure. Yes, anyone can put anything up on the AUR, but you should also be checking your build process. And that's part of the thing that's actually more secure. You need to actually have some understanding of how these packages are being built if you want to do stuff safely. And because you get yourself into that habit of just checking your build files, it kind of builds this mentality of let's check this to make sure it's safe. Whereas with the main repos, you just install it and you just assume that it's going to be safe. Anyway, that's not too important to this video. I'm gonna do a dedicated video on why I think the AUR is safer, but that's that video and this is this video. So let's go over this. So what we need from here is this git clone URL. And we should also take note of the dependencies. So in this case, none of these dependencies are within the AUR. So we're not in any sort of difficulty here, but if you're installing something that has dependencies that are also in the AUR, when you're doing the manual build process, you also have to manually install those programs yourself. Now, most of the time, that's not gonna be a problem, but occasionally you're gonna run into some things that actually do require that. I had a dictionary program where one of the dictionaries required a program from the AUR and the actual dictionary itself was in the AUR. So I had to go and manually install that first and then I could actually install the dictionary itself. Typically, as I said, you're not gonna run into that, but there will be times when you need to know about that. 
Obviously, if you're using the AUR helper, it'll deal with all of that automatically for you, so you don't have to worry about it. But when you're doing the manual process, you actually have to think about these things. So if we copy this link right here, so this is just a git clone URL, nothing special about this. So we run a git clone, and we put that in there. We run that, that'll take a couple of seconds to clone, and that'll be done. So now, if we go, actually I shouldn't LF in there, I'll CD in. We go into, it's called yay, and now we can LF in here. So if we look in here, we've got a couple of different things. So the .git directory, not too important. The .git ignore, also not too important. Source info, maybe important if you care about the metadata, but the one we actually care about is this package build. Okay, so this will have things like the package name, the package version, package description, and the part we're really worried about is the dependencies in here, the make dependencies, and also these two functions in here. Okay, so the build function, will basically be run when you tell the package to build and the package function will be run when it's told to package up the program. So what you want to worry about is where some of this stuff is coming from and obviously if it's doing anything obviously dangerous like trying to delete something that is from some point where it shouldn't have access to delete with. So if you take a look at the source right here you can see where it's trying to pull from. We can see in here that it's pulling from the yay github so that's perfectly fine. And we can see in here that it's not doing anything that's obviously dangerous. So we should also probably be fine in here. And also, you should always check the comments because occasionally the comments will say, this is broken right now or this is dangerous to install. It's just a good idea to get into the habit of actually checking this stuff so that you know if this package is safe or not to install. Even if you're installing with an AUR helper, you should at least be checking these comments in here just to make sure that the program actually works. So now let's say we actually wanted to install this program. So installing and updating works exactly the same way. So if we go make package, this comes with base devel. Someone correct me if I'm wrong. I think base devel is correct. So make package will let you basically build AUR packages. So if we run the man page for that, this is a AUR build script that will integrate within Pacman. So if we were to run, as I said, make package dash SI. So that will then try to build this package. So I've already got this installed. So this will take a couple of seconds to go and then it will prompt me with my Pacman prompt to actually update the program. I will cut ahead to when it's actually done though. Okay, so as we can see in here, this is the normal Pac-Man prompt that we see. So we've got the program installed already, so I don't need to go anything from here. And now that's done. So since it's installed with Pac-Man, you can actually use Pac-Man to do all of the basic stuff minus updating. So you can do stuff like querying for what the package name is and all that stuff. And you can uninstall packages straight from Pac-Man but you can't update with Pac-Man. You have to use an AUR helper for that. Or the other method is the manual update. So the manual update, as I said, works exactly the same way as installing. So if a new update for say, yay comes out, what we can do is we can go and clone this URL. We can run make package dash SI, and that will bring up this Pac-Man prompt to actually update the program. So that's pretty much everything for working with the AUR, at least for updating and installing. So as I said, this was not intended to be a completely comprehensive video on using Yay or working with Pac-Man or working with Make Package. What I wanted this video to be was a quick tutorial about how to use an AUR helper, how to install manually, and then also some important stuff you should take a look at, like the comments, the package build file, just so you can actually work out if something's going wrong, how do I need to fix it or where do I need to go to work out how to fix it. So I think that's pretty much everything for this video. If there's anything that I missed, let me know in the comments down below and I will address it with a comment or if it's a very big thing, I will do a separate video on it. So if you like this video, remember to smash that like button and leave me a comment down below letting me know what you think. If you want to see more videos like this, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I'm aiming for a thousand subs and any help would be really appreciated. Up on that corner, I've got the playlist there's videos in. It'll probably be something like Linux tutorials, so go check that out if you want to see stuff like that. Down below, I've got my Discord, so if you want to chat with me, I'm in there most days, so go check that out. I've also got my library if you want to see my videos on a platform that isn't YouTube. 
I'm aiming for, honestly, I'd love a thousand subs on there, but that's going to take quite a while. So any help over there will be really appreciated. Also down below, I've got my support link. So if you'd like to support the channel, obviously, as always, you don't have to. So don't feel pressured to actually do that. And also I've got my Twitter and my Mastodon. So if you want to get video updates, that's probably the best place to get them. Anywhere else is yeah, YouTube's not very good at pushing them to anyone, but Twitter and Mastodon are actually good for those. So I think that's pretty much everything for this video now, so I'm out.